If you're looking for a clean, sober, professional, academic, well-researched, historically accurate, generally accurate, serious podcast on Southern folklore, ghosts, bizarre events, and unique people, this podcast is not for you. However, if you've decided you can live with that, then join us for The Strange South. It's just the way music works. That's just the way music works. Do you do music work? I music works Tell on a me. system yeah. of bells and pulleys. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Courtney. It's been such a long time. I feel like I haven't seen you on forever. I know. We're still wearing the same clothes. <laughs> Let's start this off right. Hi, Marlea. Hi, Patrice. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Hi all. <laughs> it's been forever. I feel like since I've seen you. <laughs> Although, for you all, it'll be a week. For us, it's only five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the future and the past. We're here at the same time. Oh, Welcome to gosh. the future and the past. <laughs> oh. We're trying something new. We're doing a two-part on the same day. <laughs> I'm rubbing my ribs. I'm trying to. I've got that. I think I pulled a muscle up. here. Yeah. I've been like, I've either pulled a muscle, broken a rib, or I have pleurisy. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. All three. <laughs> Just go with all three. Wow. So we are still drinking the Hellfire Old Fashioned. Hellfire. Are. And it's just as delicious as it was a week ago. <laughs> yes. Or for us 15 minutes ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. I was like, well, I just got swamp tits. So. Oh, no. <laughs> from sure the hellfire old fashioned? From the hell, no, just <laughs> from being 50. In the South. In, in the August. South. In August. Mm. Uh, after our future selves have dealt with the... Um, heat wave of mm-hmm. this future week which would be past selves mm-hmm. for y'all it's very confusing i'm, confused I'm with you though now. no i understand I'm, you understood. He's saying confused. we're about to have the hottest week ever but yet by the time we listen to it, it'll be over yeah. so cheers cheers <laughs> yay oh, air chink Chink. by the chink, time chink. you listen to this dear listeners Right. What will James Spann have said? We oh, will have ushered in man. What I, are the words you're waiting I, on? I'm waiting for James Spann to say, this will be the last week of the 90s. Yes. And we're not talking about the 1990s. We're talking about Fashion wise, it's, right. it's like the last week of the 90s. Fashion wise, it's the first week of the 90s. Oh back at, at school. Well, I totally... Kind of cringe, love Mm -hmm. the whole '80s '90s hair thing that's Mm. come into play. Because what are you noticing hair wise? I didn't want to say this in front of. Is this about my child? Oh yeah, (laughs) I know it is. They have my haircut from the '80s to a T. Corey. Yes. 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 I was seriously like, I would totally dig that. I need to find my junior high picture because we have the same hair they got upset because someone told them that they had a mullet which it's not a mullet no but it's not exactly not a mullet. <laughs> it's not not a mullet <laughs> it's 80s hair but the funny thing is i've or seen it's not so a mullet many. or it is if it's not not a mullet then i think it's a mullet it's not not a mullet <laughs> It's just how you define a mullet. I've seen so many YouTubers that the kids watch and it's it seems this seems to be a trend, especially in like trans and non-binary YouTubers that the kids watch, that they are really leaning hard into the 80s, 90s hairstyle. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of female identifying YouTubers that will have like the the you know, like business in the front, party in the back, shaved on the sides. Even the party in the back is just like out there just i was like no that's not what you're doing i was like please don't do that no i think i might actually have to veto some like normally i'm very permissive with what they want to do with their hair and Mm -hmm. their whatever because i don't have to live with it i was like you know what you make a stupid choice your friends will mock you okay unless you're talking about i'm always anti-bleaching like yes i I am anti-bleaching the kids hair and it's been a battle for like three years of wanting color, mm-hmm. color hair. But you can't really get the color you want unless you, you bleach, bleach your hair. They see too you many ads. You can't get purple. You yeah. can't get blue. You're not going to get 
pink, like unless you strip the color from your hair. Yeah. And that's just something you can't go back from. And they're constantly on the lookout for like, especially Corey, constantly like, but this ad says that it's for hair my color. And I'm like, it's they marketing. lie to you. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lie. Like all the little pictures in the back say, if your wow. hair color is this, it's going to look like that. It's a lie. It's a lot. Especially those bright, vibrant. Oh, I know. They're always, and they those. will not believe us. It's like no matter sea what monkeys. We say. Sea monkeys are not <laughs> monkeys. They are the not sea. monkeys. It was the biggest disappointment it was such of a my lie. entire it was terrible. like third what grade did you think? experience. Did you think you were going to have oh, little monkeys? I little did. Monkeys and they were supposed like to build family a castle. With a little family. Like, yes. I sat there and fucking, I'm like, this is shrimp. I thought, I know. They look nothing like did they, they look, There's not even an approaching monkeys. Did you rehydrate? them and they lived they did they were living they were living shrimp yes but they were dried and then you put water on them yes. and they lived and yes. they lived so and i mean because I, they sold it as sea were, monkeys we couldn't appreciate the miracle of rehydrating live exactly. shrimp i was looking for like <laughs> digits with little suckers exactly, on the that's end the pictures. of pictures they the were little, little mermaid crown. monkeys i was like this is going to be magical mm-hmm. it's like i'm gonna have mm. a whole little microcosm yeah. in this little plastic tank I mean, like, what, what? There was a show. There was even what? Where there we, was a sea monkey show. There was. I mean, it's everything. It, it's just such a lie. We, it's, this is why we grew up not trusting something anything. That disappointed me. I'm trying to think. I didn't do the sea monkeys, but I remember it. Mm-hmm. I hated it. it. Made me. I so think mad. my biggest disappointment was my my little pony. Why? What was wrong oh. with my it? castle? I I watched so many commercials that I thought it was going to be like cartoony and magical when I got it. And like, you like know, the sparkles. horses were going to talk and <laughs> yes. the rainbows were going to come out. And I had to like just <laughs> pull my own little <laughs> pony and try to make it talk. <laughs> <laughs> I was like four or five. I was like, oh, I understand completely. This isn't the thing I ordered Santa. <laughs> it was my favorite gift, though, too. I had a neighbor who had the My Little Pony Castle, and I was so oh, jealous. And it. she was mean. Her name was Stephanie. <laughs> and she... Calling you out. She was one we, the one year that we lived in Montgomery. <laughs> she lived next door, and she was so mean to me. Stephanie, and she knew that I wanted to play with the My Little Pony Castle. And she told and she with would Haunt me. Yes. Mm-hmm. I had it. I would let you play, but I was up here in North Alabama. You're way down south. Only I was in time Montgomery. Lived yeah. here. That's the I, only other time. I actually want to see the Barbie movie. But we I should was, go see yeah, it. I too. We should go, we should see, go it. see it. I hated Barbies. I was never into Barbies. I had Barbies. Yeah. I always cut the hair first thing I did. I don't know. I was always anti, like since birth, I was anti frills. I was a tomboy. Anti frills, anti pink. And tried to wrap you in a pink blanket. I I was anti girly girl is what I was. And like anytime anybody tried to label me as a girl, uh, I would be, no, I can use tools and I'll kick your ass. <laughs> um, but You're you like, know, shut the fuck up. Like, but I mean, my favorite Barbies were Cher and Sony. Bono, <laughs> Sony. They had those, and and I also Sonny had Cher. Thank you, yeah, Sony and Cher, and also I had um, uh, Donnie and Marie. No way. I had those two Barbie sets. You liked music Barbies, and those were my favorite. Um, and I didn't cut Cher's hair because that'd be sacrilege. Mm. But like all the blonde haired Barbies like got shorn like immediately. And I just wasn't that big into them. But I do have some like Barbie Castle, Barbie Corvette envy because I went yeah. over to a friend's house and Barbie she, Dream House. She mm-hmm. was like she was a Malibu latch, Barbie latch house. key kid. And it was like fifth grade. And I just like went home with her one day and walked into her room and it was her mom was a single mom and she was the only kid and walked in and it was like whoa (laughs) it was like multi-story with elevator Mm -hmm. barbie castle thing corvette Mm -hmm. like you would never think Mm -hmm. and she was also very much a tomboy too but man she she had had like the barbie (laughs) hookup and i was like okay i felt about candace okay (laughs) it's so funny to think of candace having all she was a big tomboy too i was a tomboy but i I also like frilly things and, and I can use tools, but I always like, I love my little pony and I want skirts and 
I loved with everything bells in animals. Them and lace and like I loved I loved My Little Pony. I was all about my little I was all about the little Care Bears, Care Bears. Um, characters that were like posable and stuff. I had all the Care Bears, but um I liked my Trash Kids. Oh, I didn't love See, it's weird. I didn't Not really get into person. dolls. Yeah. Yeah. I had Patches. several Cabbage Patch and I really did like them, but they weren't like my thing. I played with all the Star Wars toys and I was like yeah, obsessed with um we had Dagobah. That Falcon. was the big one that we had was Dagobah. And it was like, they had the little like plastic molded swamp with the trunk that Yoda lived in. And nice. there was a little button. There was a rock that you could push. And then if you set something on this little stick, if you push the rock, it would make the thing levitate. It was pretty uh, cool. And they had quicksand. There was a little sponge yeah, of quicksand in the corner. Fun. But I literally like I would, would sit that. there. Mm-hmm. I was so obsessed with tiny things. Cause this is why Me I like too. micro machines when I was a little I older machines, was that like, I loved toy companies that built these little surprises in for kids that were obsessed with tiny mm-hmm. like intricacies because in Dagobah if you looked at it long enough you could find all the itty bitty snakes that were molded in and you could find the little toad that's hiding behind the stump and there's a spider over here and it was like filled with these little like awesome little surprises that you could find if you just stared at it long enough you know what I mean nice. so I was kind of obsessed with like finding the little hidden things and I was also big into like it was past like Care Bears like I was on the cusp of the whole cabbage patch thing, but I didn't like dolls, so I never got into that. But like Care Bears and My Little Ponies was a little bit past because like I'm five years older than mm-hmm. you know, kind of my growing up. But my brother, who is like one year younger than y'all, mm-hmm. got into like He Man and She. Oh my god! So yeah. we had like Castle. Yeah, yeah. We had lots. We had Castle Grace, and it yeah. does like the turny yeah. thing. Yes, and so there I was secret trap door. Secret trap door. So we were all about playing yeah, my that. Cousins had that. Oh, I man. loved Castle Grace School, and yes. I I bought that. There was like an addition to it that they sold like year like in the late eighties, where there was like a skull mountain or something like that, and slime came out the mountain. Yes, and I, like, it's I remember those slime. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my Seymour case? No. All right. Well, there's our trip down memory toy mm-hmm. lane. Yeah. Just have to throw this one out there real quick, though. My what? favorite. I didn't. I never owned it, but my cousin Matthew did. Operation. <gasps> ah! Operation. I never had it when Operation I was little either. Operation gave me such anxiety. Me too. Oh my god. I loved it though. Yeah, it was so good. You know, I can just hear it now. And it's little no red nose light. I have it now. You can play it with me. You can play it in my house. We should bring it up. We should let's have play it. it. So you know what I love after. Let's do before and after drinks. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mousetrap. Do you remember Mousetrap? Mm-hmm. That game. I know what you're talking so about. So much fucking setup. It was like yeah, this whole That's why big, we never had it. <laughs> I, that's why nobody's parents would buy it. It's like they got one per, one family they knew would buy it. And then everybody else would be like, fuck no, we're not having this. It was this huge <laughs> setup where you had to like all these pulleys and little cages and everything. But the whole point of the game was to catch this little mouse in a little like dropping. She may have had it. It was she weird. had everything. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, I was all about that. I was like all the little moving parts. And I was like, so, and I would have lost them all in, cause that's the kid I was, <laughs> you know, it's like, we were just like my kids. We had hungry hippos and we played it for like two days until all the marbles went under the couch and <laughs> it's like, they're gone. That's it. Yeah. I think you play <sighs> hungry hippos like once and then that's it. Dave and Buster's has a hungry hippos adult game where you sit on the hippo. Oh my God. It's fucking amazing. Like it's worth the $10 you Wait, pay to play. What? <laughs> You sit on the hippo. You sit on the hippo and you push this lever to make his head go forward and grab the stuff. They're like little <laughs> bumpy balls. Bump, like. uh, 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 oh my uh, God. What are you trying that to just, that just That just made me think of that. That um, I'm sorry. I'm totally getting off topic here. But that YouTube or that TikTok person where she's like, okay, you know, whatever this number lands on, I'm going to be that weight. Uh, and she has that self conversation. <laughs> she's like, I am the circle. <laughs> Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. No. I just had that feeling. It was like, I am the hippo. No, I don't know. <laughs> We're, you're going to have to show us this later. Y'all don't know that? No. Oh, my God. I sit there and just watch it. I don't have TikTok. It. Well, I mean, it, once it's on TikTok, it's usually it's on, on the things. all the TikTok things. Goes to all the but things. I will definitely show that to y'all because it's like one of my favorite. Because she's, she's just comedic gold. <laughs> Reminds me, don't you have a hippo story for the after talk? Or the side no, beat? I just I dropped it, but I could I could mention it okay, though. Well. I could still mention it because that was a whole the story. story. Talk, whatever. Yes. <laughs> All right. Are we ready? We are back to Natchez. We are back to Natchez. Uh, should we do the thing we do? Oh, we should. Yeah. Do that thing you do, Patrice. 
Do you want more Strange South every week? We can help. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you can join our Facebook fan group, Fans of the Strange South Podcast, to keep the chat going with our whole creepy community. Do you have a story idea for us, or a story of your own to share? Email us at stories at thestrangesouth.com. Plus, if you join our Patreon, you not only help support the podcast, you get free swag, extras, exclusives, and a discount on merch. You can find links to all these things on our website, thestrangesouth.com, along with photos, links, and show notes from every episode. Strange South t-shirts, mugs, stickers, and other goodies. See you there. And we're back! It is next week! We did the thing. <laughs> Our future past selves. Our future past selves say hello. We're doing it. All right, so here is the deal. I'm going to give you a brief overview because it has been more than 15 minutes for you people out there in the internet radio world of the cast of characters. So we have um, Jenny Merrill, who is a woman who lives in Glen Burnie House, who was uh, an aristocratic you know, 68 year old woman at this part, at this point. Yeah. Kind of a, a rich socialite lady. Who became recluse. She's in who her became 60s a recluse. And she never married. And she never married. Her cousin who lives in one of the plantations next door, whose name is Duncan, who comes to visit her every evening, even though they, you know, he tried to marry her and he couldn't. He wants a little p- bit he of Jenny. A little something, something. A little, a little Jenny. We have um, their neighbors. Oh, uh, Dick Dana. And Octavia Dockery, who are squatting on Glenwood Plantation, which is in a dilapidated, disgusting state next door. This is such this is such a, a uh, Flannery novel. Yes, yeah, man. I swear. Real. It seems so fake. Yeah. I can see the I cast know. of characters. I know, but it's, and it was this, so real. Where's this play? <laughs> well, I know, right? It, maybe, <laughs> maybe there was one. There have been multiple books. And then we have... Oh, Lord. It's been it's been a week and I can hardly Pink. remember Emily Burns, who is a laundress, a, a young black woman in town whose mother owns uh, or rents rooms in a boarding house and a about 50 year old man that she met at that boarding house named Pink. And is that everybody? I think that might be everybody. That is right and now. goats. And yes, and, and livestock. There have been and the sheriff. Yes, and the, the sheriff. sheriff is called constantly for controversies and like issues between Jenny and Octavia. Octavia's goats are always going to Jenny's property, eating things, and Jenny's like, "Get the fuck off my property!" And it's been like ten years of litigation and sheriff's calls. So when we left off, Pink had just gotten into town. He's looking for work because he doesn't have a job in Natchez. He lost his job in the Depression. Came down. Did he lose his job? In Chicago, yes. in the, so, and that's why he moved, and that's back. why he moved back okay. to Natchez. His family is still up in Chicago, okay. And he plans to send money back, but he really has like just recently gotten back, and he's staying at Emily and her mom's boarding house. So he's wandering around town looking for work. We talked about this, and he's turned down by Jenny and Duncan, and then he happens to go up to the residence, quote unquote, of Dick and Octavia, and they say, you know what, Jenny's got a lot of money in her house. Why don't we steal it? And that's where we're going to pick up. What happens on August 4th is a little vague on the details. Pink goes back to the boarding house. He has a 32 pistol there and he grabs that. And on or near sunset, he and Emily go for a walk toward Glenwood. And it's unclear how much Emily knows about what's fixing to happen here. But he, he's already stated that he needed to rob. Yes. He needed to rob. He is going along with the plan that Dick and Octavia have presented to him of we need to rob Jenny Merrill's house. Okay. So he definitely knows what he's doing. Right. It's kind of unclear what Emily knows. Right. Because it like it's it's kind of explained in the book, but it doesn't exactly make sense to me. Like the motives are a little uh, but we're going from reports and like first, you know, level resources that are ages old and stuff and, and incomplete. So anyway, they go on a walk toward Glenwood. Um, At some point, they meet a guy named Poe, whose full name, I think, was Edgar Allan Poe Newton, who was also, uh, uh, I know, right? He'd like, he's got to be imaginary, but he's a real person. (laughs) And um, who was also a boarder at Emily's boarding house. And they, it, it seems like they're meeting up with him intentionally. Like Pink has planned to meet Poe in the woods. 
Pink and Poe. Pink, Pink and, and Poe and, po and Emily. And Emily. And the three of them go to Glenwood and they meet up with Octavia and Dick Dana and all five of them head towards Glen Burnie, which is Jenny's house. Octavia has already told everybody, listen, Duncan, the cousin, comes to the house every night at exactly the same time clockwork. He leaves at 830. He gets there around nine. So what we need to do... Is wow, we, they up late for being so I, old. That's He's what coming I thought, over too. at nine o'clock. He's coming over late. Mm. I know, a sketch. What are they do? And listen, there's more questions like that in the book. I'm what not even going to get doing? into it. But there are questions like that in the book. She's just like, no, I don't want to marry you, but come on over. But you know, I mean, everybody girl. needs a do little something, something. Do you do it? <laughs> cousins, cousins, cousins. But um, were they first or second? <laughs> it makes a difference. Here's the question, <laughs> or maybe it doesn't. <laughs> maybe it, it didn't doesn't. in the old South <laughs> or no, in it monarchy. Make no <laughs> yeah, uh, in the old England either. <laughs> in the old England. So they're um they're on their way over to Glen Burnie. Octavia has already said, so what we need to do is we need to head over there before it's dark, but before and before Duncan gets there. It's like we need to head over around sunset because we need to be able to see in the house, you know, to look around. We can't be turning on, you know, a bunch of lamps and stuff like that. Like we need to still be able to see a little bit. So there needs to be a little bit of light left, but we got to get out by 830. So they go over to the house and while four of them wait outside, Pink is the one who goes in and uh, he goes upstairs to Jenny's bedroom because while they were in the woods outside and watching the house, they saw her start the lamp up in her bedroom. So they know where she is. And he intends to intimidate her because he's got a 32 pistol and he just wants to take, you know, she needs to tell him where the money is and he's going to take the money and he's going to go. But OK, I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt right here. Go. Small town. Mm hmm. Everybody knows everybody. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like, how is he going to intimidate her? She knows who he is, but she doesn't. Oh, she doesn't. He's That's the crazy thing. He's been gone for a really long time and he did just ask her for money, but they pretty much forgot his face the second he walked off the porch. And okay. this is one of the things that showed up in the testimonies is that like Duncan and her thought so little of a black man who wanted money walking up to their house that they did not even remember. They didn't remember his name. They didn't remember hardly anything about uh, him. Okay. okay. And also, they didn't connect him with town. Or couldn't he wear a look or something? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that he a was. Bandana, it's unclear, something. but I don't know that he was. Okay, okay, okay. Go but ahead. that's a good point. Yeah. So he's trying to intimidate her. She is not the intimidating, like, you can't intimidate me kind of person. That's who she is. She's so entitled she, and has money. She is entitled. She also knows and owns guns herself. Right. Obviously. And with the, you know, she she's lived by herself. By herself. Exactly. She's been killing the goats and, and Pigs yep. that come onto her property. Yes. And they say that she used to level a rifle at people who worked for her when they weren't working fast enough. Oh, so she's Jesus Christ. But um, so she doesn't like put her hands up and cower in the corner. She tries to start something with him. Ooh. And he hits her with the butt of his gun to stop her from messing around. So she's trying to run out of the room to get her gun, which is in her purse. But she keeps her, she keeps her pistol in her purse. It's a similar pistol to the one that he has, actually. And she's trying to get to the dining room to get it. He is scuffling with her to try and stop her from going where she's going. And shots are fired. And Jenny starts screaming because she hasn't been shot at this point. But shots have been fired like into the door frame of the bedroom. And when she starts screaming, Pink shoots her in the neck and the chest. Mm. Now, at this point, the others do start running. A few of the others start running into the house. And they are turning things inside out to try and figure out where the money is while they still have time, you know, because they've made all this noise and um, they don't find anything. And then for some reason, Poe and Pink decide that it's a good idea to take Jenny's body and remove it from the house. So they drag her down to the thicket outside leaving pools of blood, smears of blood all over the walls, like personal articles that she had on her are falling off and they're dragging her out of the house and depositing her in a ditch down away from the house. Like I said, nobody finds any money. It isn't there because what Octavia had heard was just a rumor. And of course it was. Her cousin told the, the court later, Jenny only ever kept a couple dollars on her at a time in her house. So... Everything is fucked up. Everything's gone wrong. The five people just scatter in different directions. Pink, Poe, and Emily go back to the boarding house. Pink immediately burns his clothes in the yard with gasoline and leaves the state. 
He has Poe drive him to the river. He crosses the river. He says goodbye to Emily. And he says, I'll send for my trunk. Like that's in how much of a, he's like, I know how wrong this went. I'm out of here. Um, Dick and Octavia go back to their house to figure out what to do. Dick is not the brightest bulb. He has taken a lamp from the house and just tossed it in the woods on his own property. And they're, they're thinking, okay, when people figure out what's going on here, they're going to suspect us because we've got a history all over paper, you know, of, of all these disputes. issues of disputes. Yeah. Let's go back to the lamp. He set something on fire. He didn't set anything on fire. It was okay. off. But okay. he he had this lamp that he was carrying to help like light their way out with the body. Mm-hmm. And he didn't he just didn't put it down in the house. So he just ran away with it. Realized once he got home, oh, that he, had so it, he, he just took tossed the evidence it. and tossed it yeah. on his property. Yeah. yeah. So the tenants who lived at Glen Burnie had heard the screams and the shots, but Black men are too smart to know to go into a white woman's house after dark, right. especially when there's been trouble. So they head up the road because they know Duncan's going to be on his way. And they're going to be looking for the first person. Exactly. To and so they're like, I'm going to find, we're going to go to Duncan and let him know immediately something has happened and he needs to go check it out. So they meet him on the road. He gallops all the way to the house. He gets into the house and he, he finds blood smeared all over the walls. He finds bloody slippers, bloody hair combs on the floor. Her room has pools of blood in it. So he has the, the guys call the law and they start searching for the body because Jenny's nowhere to be found. In town, odd, like weirdly, like word is already getting around in town about this happening. I mean, so the sheriff comes out. His name is Book Roberts. And he calls his bloodhound guy. He calls a state fingerprint expert. And then he goes over to Glenwood. Just like Octavia knew he was going to do because he's like, okay, well, who are the first people that have arguments with her? Right. I was Octavia Dockery. He and his deputy knock on the door and they're planning on asking, you know, if they've seen Jenny recently, you know, her whereabouts, because this isn't a murder case yet. They don't have a body. They just got blood. They've just got a lot of blood. Yeah. No person. They notice when they're knocking on the door that there's a man's shirt drying on the line at midnight, still wet from washing. When the man who lives here notoriously never washes. So they're like, well, that's sus. You know, <laughs> like, that's not right. right. <laughs> and they, they can't get anybody to come downstairs at first. They yell and they yell. And finally, Dick appears on the steps. He starts walking down and then he stops and he looks at them and he says, I know nothing of the murder. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. My so, God. So they arrest Dick and Octavia. <laughs> you think? And, um, And, of course, because we are where we are, they round up every black man in the area, um, including the ones who are helping with the investigation, because all of them are going to be suspect, because surely they would be more likely to do this crime than any white people here. Bloodhounds find the the broken lamp in the woods that Dick has tossed to the side. It's 5.45 a.m. before they finally find her body, which I was like, maybe this was written out of order, but those bloodhounds really sucked if they didn't find her body before they find the lamp. Right. So they do find her body in the thicket. She is dead. She's got bullet wounds. so They know that it's murder. And Dick Dana, who, you know, when the sheriff takes him in for questioning, is like a shit show. He's he's mm-hmm. not all there. And he has been coached all night about what he should and shouldn't say. So he's very confused Mm -hmm. and he constantly contradicts himself. He gives all kinds of just incriminating statements about what he did and didn't do things that he knows that he shouldn't have known. So the sheriff is very suspicious. And the next day it hits the news. It hits the local news and it is just a split second before it somehow hits the regional news. And then it's in the national news. Yes. And like we said, with Southern Gothic in vogue, You know, people are very interested because they're like, this is like Faulkner. (laughs) Like you said, this is like a Flannery O'Connor novel. This is like a real life thing. And so they're like, oh, look, this is so interesting and cool. Reclusive Southern Belle murdered. Well, it's like true crime. It's like true crime of the day. It is. Um, So, you know, some of the newspapers went down the rabbit hole of her like maybe romantic relationship with Duncan. Um, Dug into that story. There wasn't a whole lot to dig. Probably there. You know, some of the newspapers started kind of making up their own backstories for some of the stuff like they do for sensational reasons. Mostly people were fascinated. They were fascinated with the idea of the murder and kind of with Jenny. But really, it was Goat Castle that they were fascinated Mm -hmm. about. There was a picture of Dick and Octavia sitting together on a bench at the courthouse. And she's 
she's a very severe looking woman pictures yeah and he looks crazy he looks crazy she's like she's got angular features she's unsmiling and she looks like someone who just wouldn't smile like not even just that she's not smiling in this picture has no sense of humor but she would not you know that's how she looks yeah she's got a wide-brimmed hat on she's wearing kind of like a coverall frock and he is sitting in coveralls like mechanics coveralls almost he's got wild hair and a beard that covers like everything from his nose to his ears everywhere he's balding kind of he's got a high forehead and very wide like um dark eyes with very bushy eyebrows and he is bony you can see like the cavities where his collarbones hit his neck you know he's he's a skinny bony man i pictured her looking like the lady that plays the wicked witch of the west and the wizard of oz that but sturdier the mean not as the skinny mean when she's but yes. yes when she's like yes she kind of she, yes. she, she, she looks dog. like granny from um she does Beverly because Hillbillies. of the way she's dressed especially she mm-hmm. looks like granny mm-hmm. but she's she's not as skinny she's not skinny like he is like she's she's a solid lady she's not you know she's not like overweight or anything but she's a presence mm-hmm. in that picture she looks it so this is the picture that went out in all the newspapers and people were just just fascinated. So Jenny's funeral happens. Local people very quickly start wondering why nobody is being hanged for this yet. Somebody actually states that it's silly that there are two white folks in prison for this while they seem to not be suspecting any black folks at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Except Octavia and Dick's fingerprints turn out to be all over Jenny's house in perfect condition. Like there was no question that they are correct or not. That is their fingerprints. They were in the house and they have lied about being in the house and they changed their story when they're confronted with this. Um, they say that it's because they heard the screams and they ran over and then, then they touched the wet blood to know that it was still warm. And then they got scared and they ran home and never called the cops and never, you know, it was like, it, it's ridiculous. But there was one more set of prints in the house that they couldn't identify. Yep, Mm -hmm. that's the one. Mm -hmm. Duncan suddenly remembers this strange Negro, he says, asking both him and Jenny for money Mm -hmm. or work. You know, they start to think, okay, well, this is a trail I guess we're going to follow because we've got one unidentified set of prints here. And people want somebody for this. Yeah. So Dick and Octavia are in jail Sheriff Roberts calls in an active, uh, an expert ballistics detective from New Orleans and white folks start coming to visit. Having read the news, they start to push for the release of Dick and Octavia. What? They mm-hmm. wouldn't have given them the fucking time of day before I know. this. Oh, absolutely they not. They had goats and pigs running around. They would have had nothing to do with them. Running around in loincloths. Like. And they've read about Goat Castle now. And, and it's like, it really does seem like something they would have not even... Yeah, I mean, you're 100% right. But folks from around the state and beyond the state start to flock to Natchez, not just to see them, but to see this house. Well, yeah. Because they started posting pictures of the house in the newspapers. Well, hell, they probably just let everybody walk on through, step in the blood. That was a yes. Patrice has pulled up a picture. This Um, is the goat house. That's what I picture. And I'm going to put that one on our website. There are going to be several of these that I'm going to share with y'all if you want to look on our the goat house in Montgomery. No, no, this is the goat castle. (laughs) Sorry, goat castle. castle. (laughs) So, like, because like we said, it was dilapidated. It was infested with fleas. There was bird droppings everywhere. It was infested with. Everything. There were wasp nests Snakes, in every corner, I'm black sure. mold, dust yes. so thick you couldn't see what was under it, some people said. And people would come, like you said, they would come and let themselves in and they would take souvenirs for themselves when they came to see the house. They would take personal papers. They would take letters and photos. There was two weeks That's of horrible. Coverage that people come and just help themselves to whatever Mm -hmm. but i mean how great would it be to like open up a box in the attic from Mm -hmm. your like great grandparents and like find like i know oh my gosh it's like everybody's like like, like, don't do that but that would be fantastic do you have you never have you ever had that experience where you like find a box that if it's your old Mm -hmm. your family's old box or something that you find in a house you move into and all like you're just the entire time you look through it so carefully because you're like there's gonna be something in here that's just magical yes i just went through that i know 
so it's it's two weeks of this circus. Everybody wants to see it. There are cars from Texas, Oklahoma, Illinois. They block traffic in all of Natchez trying to get to this place. Somebody introduces the idea to Danny, Dana, Danny, from uh, to Dick and Octavia's lawyers that well, if all these people are going to come here and trespass on this property, you might as well be charging Charge. admission. Mm-hmm. And so they're like. Well, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. And so they start charging 25 cents a person to come see this humiliation of a house. Mm-hmm. They get a very good lawyer mm-hmm. and he files a writ of habeas corpus saying that they've been unlawfully imprisoned. August 15th. So they've been in jail. I feel like they were in jail this time for about two weeks. August 15th is the habeas corpus hearing at the Adams County Courthouse and is this like jammed from floor to ceiling with locals and reporters. The judge rules that they should be released on their own recognizance. People offer them like pats on the back and you know, all this stuff. Congratulations. Do you need a place to stay? And they know we want to go back to Glenwood. So they go back to goat castle. They're at goat cost castle and they keep charging admission because people keep coming. They become themselves part of the spectacle of the house. People are coming like a freak show to see them. And um, they greet them. They show off the house. They give tours. They show off the goats. Dick is more into this than Octavia. He used to be like he wanted to be a concert pianist. And he is, you know, messed up his hand. He can't really play that well. But he plays well enough. And he starts to entertain the crowds that come to the house so much like so often that they decide they're going to charge a separate admission to watch Dick play piano. September 4th, more than 500 people paid to get into the grounds. Jesus, and to where were these perform. people like sleeping? I know. Night. I have no idea. Um, the Mississippi Railroad started offering special trips for people to go meet them in person, like advertising it as the Goat Castle tour. And the money that they got from this w- was supposed to really be used to renovate and rehabilitate the house. But if they did that, then no one would come. Right. So, of course, that's not what it goes. And it also doesn't go to pay their taxes. Oh, I was going to say, why didn't right. it go to pay their lawyer? It didn't. It didn't go to pay anything. Like, nobody what, knows what their happened lawyer to this money. Or their... Did the goats eat it? Oh, Lord. I mean, I'd say good for them if they weren't conspirators in a murder. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, sure, yeah. do what you want. Have charge people will come look at your mess. That makes you happy. And they <laughs> but, still, like, they are still suspects in this. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, they're they, not off the hook. They were well, like, they're, they're still in, in the it. middle of a legal proceeding. This was their plan. Then somebody came up with a grand idea of them going out on tour. So they tour Mississippi and Louisiana and some of Arkansas, I think. And they charge to full houses sometimes of people who come and let them listen to them tell their story. And a lot of the time, this is their fabricated story of their past that meets the Southern Gothic expectations of the people who might be listening. Yes. And he gets to play piano and she shows off artifacts from the house and they make money that way influencers oh gee i know right they do this until (laughs) november and november is when their grand jury is to meet Mm. sheriff book roberts has over the course of these couple of months that they've been touring and doing all their shenanigans unraveled the clues that lead him to pink he finds out that pink had visited glenwood and glen burney he finds out where pink has lived in town what the boarding house was like who he'd talked to and realizes that that third set of pring- fingerprints might actually be his because Pink also has a, a injury to one of his hands and the fingerprints were uh, from an injured hand. I'm really kind of impressed about the whole fingerprint thing. Me for too. It being like Mississippi and in the early 1900s. Mm-hmm. Me too. I actually didn't know how much science was there like yeah. available for them at that time. Right. But there was also like a ballistics expert that yeah, came in and I was know. able when to you test said the bullets. That, that kind of like surprised me mm-hmm. as well they tracked this information to emily burns front door so her her mother's name is nelly black and emily and nelly's boarding house still has the trunk stored mm. that pink had left there and so in the trunk the police find 32 caliber bullets papers that have his his legal name on them his no- name was george pearl but he went by pinkney and um they arrested emily and her mom on suspicion they discovered when they asked around that, you know, they're like, OK, well, we need to find this guy because he skipped town, you know, and he may be the guy we're looking for. Well, they find out Pink has been shot to death by a deputy in Arkansas. Oh. He was shot six times for, quote unquote, resisting arrest because he was a strange black man on the street after dark. And he, you know, was killed by a deputy. 
So it turned out, though, when they found out what he had in his possession, that he he appeared to have had the murder weapon in his possession at the time. So Emily and her mom, in contrast to what, you know, Dick Dana and Octavia Dockery enjoyed, they couldn't afford a lawyer. There were no nice people who stepped up to ask for their release. There were no people that came in to assume their innocence. Nobody wrote newspaper articles about them at all. Emily was interrogated every day for hours. And then on August 22nd, she was brought into the interrogation room and the chief deputy, this is not the sheriff, the chief deputy laid a bullwhip on the table and said, you have 30 minutes to tell me the truth. And so, of course, she gave them a confession. She she told them that it was Pink who had shot the, you know, uh, Jenny Merrill, that she and Poe were also there, but that she never entered the house. It wasn't supposed to come to violence. This wasn't something that they had planned. They didn't plan to murder anybody. She didn't say anything about her being involved in any kind of plan at all, actually. She told them the story that I told in the last episode where, um, you know, she had just gone for a walk with him and discovered what was happening after they got on the way. And he was, he, she said, he said, once you realized what what they were there for. He was like, well, now, you know, so I'm going to have to shoot you if you try and go out, go back on me. So that was what she said. Why did he take her anyway? That is very weird to None me. None of that makes sense. None of it makes that sense to me. That story doesn't really And I would it, it, it really, to me, it kind of sounds like she, she may have known something. Mm-hmm. I don't really understand the way that it's been laid out. Like, it doesn't make a lot of mm-hmm. sense to me why she would have been there at all or why she would have stayed. But it does sound likely that she ended up in a position that oh, made yeah. it kind of impossible for her to not s- stay involved somehow and she did have feelings for pink i wondered that and so that kind of complicated things but you know she didn't say she didn't give this confession until that day she'd been in jail for a while she'd been interrogated a lot and she'd not been saying pink did it up until that day but she'd also recently found out that he was dead and i think she might have been trying to protect him is what the the author of the book had said that Mm -hmm. she may have been trying to to keep it off of him she placed dick dana and octavia Mm-hmm. In the story. And and their fingerprints are there. Uh, for real. I mean, like, and her fingerprints were found nowhere inside the home. Like, there is no hard evidence. You know, she's got this confession, which was obviously coerced out of her. But there is no hard evidence that she was even there. They call her an accessory. Well, she was. They had kept her in jail with no charges this entire time. Charges have also been filed against Dick and Octavia, but they're safe at home, charging money to get into their house. Meanwhile, the grand jury doesn't meet until November and Emily and her mom, all the while where Dick and uh, Octavia are doing their little tour Mm -hmm. of the South, Emily and her mom are in jail with no visitors allowed except their pastor. She loses 20 pounds by the time she actually shows up in front of the grand jury. And when that finally comes around in November, the grand jury votes 11 to 8 to indict Dana and Dockery as accessories to the murder. But the district attorney says there's not enough evidence and dismisses their indictment. Meanwhile, they do indict Emily Burns, no, whose no, fingerprints no. are nowhere in the house. Mm-mm. She Mm-mm. she and she also has no past history with Jenny. I Mm-mm. mean, like all the reasons why they should have been indicted. Yeah, they should have been. All of them should have been. That's kind of Every the argument of, of the book is been. that like they, these They're two were at least and in a, yes. and she's accessory. And she's accessory. They were in a worse position than her yeah. as far as what actually seems to have happened. And they got off pretty much scot-free. Because they're white. So they appoint Emily an attorney since she can't afford one. And they set her trial for a week later. Mm -hmm. And it's also the day after Thanksgiving. So they don't Mm -hmm. even have a week to prepare her defense. Mm -hmm. Pink is convicted post-mortem, which I didn't even know you could do. I don't think you can anymore. So, you know, the the society is legal now anymore. The community wants somebody to hang and they've already decided it's not going to be Dick Dana and Octavia Dockery. But Sheriff Book Roberts, he still thinks that they had Mm -hmm. something to do with it. Well, shit, he's been at their house for like the past 10, 15 years every Mm -hmm. day because of like bullshit. Yeah. So he he puts in new details at the trial. And if you want detailed descriptions of the trial and all that kind of stuff, please do read the book. It's a very good book. There are details that show that some of what Emily has told police 
is at least partially led by the people who are telling her what they would need her to say to get a conviction for this. By the end of the trial, the jury finds her guilty as charged, but they can't agree on a punishment, which is what saves her from execution. Oh, thank God. And she's sentenced, though, to life in prison oh, at Parchman Prison on November 28th. That Parchman Prison was basically like a way for the establishment, the white establishment to just return black prisoners into the old South because it was a farm. It was a plantation prison. It was a farm prison. They ended up, you know, planting and picking cotton and doing all the things that they would have done as enslaved people. You know, it's basically just like, ha ha ha, screw you federal government. We can still do this. We just have to put them in jail. (laughs) So a year from Jenny's murder, The Garden Club of Natchez throws their second annual pilgrimage of houses. Dick and Octavia market their house tour to visitors on the pilgrimage, calling it a museum and a beautiful historic home. But they have. I bet those ladies do not agree. They were so pissed. I know they did. They were super pissed. Mm -mm. So the sheriff in all this year has never stopped believing that Dick and Octavia weren't involved. And he's kept investigating over the course of this year, even after Emily's conviction, Octavia brings us because she is the most litigious bitch you could ever even imagine. Mm -hmm. She brings a civil suit against him, basically saying that he was liable for false arrest and that he had made a mockery of them and humiliated them. And he basically laughed in their face and said like, okay, well it wasn't false arrest and you made a mockery of yourselves. Right. Right. No help here um, from here. Um, in your ni- fingerprints were in blood. I know. And then you went and like pranced all over the country talking about your shit. In 1933, Sheriff Roberts had them rearrested. Good. And indicted on accessory to murder charges. Good. But they only had to stay in jail one night because somebody paid their bond. <laughs> on the day of the trial, the court could not find 12 jurors who were not already biased. Oh, man. And so they, they even though they interviewed 200 men over two days, they couldn't find 12 people to be on the jury. Well, they needed to like, well, sequester. they needed a lot man. But <laughs> they um, need to go to another court. Yes, yeah. for real. But they declared a mistrial. So Dana and Dockery were never held accountable. In 1940, Governor Paul Johnson suspended Emily Byrne's sentence mm. indefinitely. What year? 1940. Oh, good. So he had it was eight years, shitty, but... eight years in Parchman Prison. He had heard people had actually reached out to him about her and she had never stopped advocating for herself in mm-hmm. whatever may in whatever way she could. And she also was amazing in jail i mean as far as behavior as far as her record as far Mm -hmm. as you know she did everything she could to stay 100 percent clean and when she met him you know they convinced him to come to the jail and meet her she got on her knees and said i am innocent in tears and he was like Mm -hmm. you are right he's like i 100 percent believe you she was 45 when he suspended her sentence she had learned how to sew in prison. That was one of the one of the jobs that she had had that she had to do at Parchman. So she actually was able to make a little bit more money coming out as a I seamstress. I thought you said she was only in her 20s, but I guess that means she was in her thir- late 30s. She was 30s. 37 when she when this well, happened. Well, that had to be. Mm, I can't remember. No, I thought she was I thought she was in her upper 20s. Eight years. It's 37. She would have been 32. No. You said she was 45. Yeah, you said she was 45. Oh, yeah. She's 45 when she came out. Mm-hmm. She, I just pictured her very young and him being 50, but more she was. But she older. was a widow. She was. Oh, she was. She I thought she was 30 when her husband. She might have been 30 when her husband died. Anyway. Yeah. OK. So she heard um, about Dick and Dana Dockery or uh, Dick, Dana and Octavia Dockery still selling admission to Goat Castle. As far as we know, she never saw them again. She stayed in Natchez. She was able to buy a home by the age of 55. She married a deacon in her church mm. and he already had children. So the fact that she was older when she came out of jail, she was still able to kind of have a family because she had his okay. family. I didn't know how this was going to end. So I'm, Yes. And she lived with her family until her death in 1969. And she was a respected elder in her church community and in her local community. Wow. Um, Dick and Octavia were a n- fucking mess. Never and paid their continue taxes. Continue to be a mess. Yes. They never paid their taxes. They, for the rest of their lives, fought eviction and foreclosure on the house because they could never pay for the house. Oh, they um, could. They chose not to. Yeah. Um, Dick Dana died at Glenwood in 1948 of pneumonia. He was 77 years old. 
<laughs> Olivia died, or Octavia, I wrote Olivia, but it's Octavia, <laughs> died in March 1949. She was 83, and she had filed her last lawsuit three weeks before her death. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she was like the OG Karen. <laughs> she was... Oh my Just, God! You know, I mean, and it's funny because like, that's their true. Lives sucked anyway. But I was gonna say, like, I mean, part of me is like she they was were kind of in wily. Their jail. I mean, she was kind of wily with the way that she managed to. She had to have been an extremely intelligent mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. to be able to game the system the way that she did all through her life. Mm. But the family that legally inherited Goat Castle tore it to the ground in 1955. Yeah, wow. There was nothing to save. I, I mean, bet. they had basically, it was a disgusting trash heap. They built a housing development there and they named it Glenwood. And that was the end of Goat Castle. So wow. that is the end of the story Woo. of the murder at Goat Castle. Oh, man, Thank I'm God just... it had a semi-happy ending it's for right. the person who didn't deserve well, to be yeah, fucked I mean, over. It's, it's sad that, that that happened to her, but it's one of those wrong place, wrong time, mm. wrong people you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Technically, she was an accessory to murder. She was. She right. was there. But those yeah. crazy people should have been they should have been yes but then they live in a hell they live with fleas and Mm -hmm. shit and mold they're just hell prison would probably probably have been been better better. they probably would have gotten like three square meals a day they're Mm -hmm. um the way that looks i mean not that they shouldn't have been convicted but damn they just but the weird thing is like like you're saying like they did they did get income from Mm -hmm. what they did with the tours of the house and the show and everything like that and it doesn't i mean i know they had to clean they had to clean the house to a certain extent just to let people in because you couldn't physically walk through the rooms so she did actually hire some people to come help her clear it out some but like it I mean, at some point, it was almost like there was some level of choice there. Oh, that yeah. They stayed in that. You know what I mean? And I don't I don't say that lightly. I recognize no. how those you how those terms are used against people, right. you know, so I, I get some that. Problems. But they have me- mental illness I and mean, yeah. they're definitely hoarders slash. I mean, something. right. Yeah, they really they have to the see these pictures in to understand. Their favor, mm-hmm. too. And they chose Ugh. they chose they chose evil, evil. Um, yeah, they're like, oh, I heard she's got money. Let's go do this. And yeah. everybody's just like, come on, let's go. Right. Yeah. I mean, it is a depression, though. Yeah. I mean, and that, I that no really idea is what I would do in desperate that's times. That's kind of the like, point really of don't. like going into all of those backstories is like, mm-hmm. ain't nobody in a great position right there. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like they were there was struggling. no winners. And mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, I, don't, I, I really don't know. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Great story, Marlea. Very visually, I could see it. Like, Thank you. Really Y'all have to look at those pictures. Oh. I mean, it's really hard to believe You'll unless post you them? see it. Yeah, I'll post them. Okay. I've already collected them all. So excellent. Well, all right, you y'all. guys. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.